So as I was saying, we're about to start the reading of the second, it's first book, the second time. So I'm going to do just a you know brief summary once I get over to find where that is. I've got so many different things open here, I can't find it. Here we go. Okay. So we covered the first three chapters before. Tonight we're going to look at uh, the next two chapters, but for those of you who weren't on the first one, I want to give you a, a, a brief summary of the first three chapters. In the first three chapters of Dominion Over All, we meet the members of what will become the eco-adventure team. Now the story starts off when 13-year-old Zach Bates is cleaning out the cages of his small private zoo and his Terrier, canine friend Angus grows bored waiting for Zach to run uh, so Zach, he's bored waiting for Zach so he runs across the street to the park to chase the squirrels. Now unfortunately he doesn't check the traffic on the way back and he's struck by a car. And I saw this time and time again as a veterinarian. It's, 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 it's a terrible thing to happen, and it happens. So Zach and his stepmother, Kalita, rush Angus to Dr. George's hospital. Dr. George is the hospital, the local hospital, where Zach meets both Dr. George's daughter, Allison, and it's also where he meets a mangy black cat who introduces herself to Zach as the last living magic cat. That's right. She, Raket, can talk, though she's careful to hide it from anyone other than Zach. How would you like, you kids here, would you like to have a magic cat that could talk to you? Well, probably, maybe not. The magic cat, like oh, D David, the, the biggest child uh, kid of all here, <laughs> David <laughs> Pay, he's a good friend of mine. He said he'd love to have a, a talking magic cat. So she, she can talk, though she's careful to hide it from anyone other than Zach. So she convinces Zach that she can save Angus's life. Now he's in pretty critical shape. We're not sure whether you know Zach, uh, Angus is going to make it or not, but. She can only save his life, she only agrees to save his life if Zach promises to agree to something for her. But she won't tell him what that something is. Kind of like blackmail, isn't it? So finally, here he is in the chance he might lose his dearest, dearest friend, Angus. In desperation, Zach agrees to do whatever it is that she wants him to do. And sure enough, Raket performs some amazing magic that brings Angus back from the edge of death. And after Zach leaves, knowing that it looks like, you know, Angus is going to make it, Raket walks through the concrete wall. Remember, she's a magic cat, so she can do some pretty amazing things. She walks through the wall of the hospital to go meet her traveling companion. Her traveling companion's name is Samson. And Samson is a giant, like a Newfoundland dog. I don't know if you know what Newfoundland looks like, but you have these huge dogs. Samson's one of the largest dogs of all. And he happens to have this, there you go. It's, uh, Lauren show, showed here, or yeah, show, show the thing again. And we'll, show, we'll do show and tell here in a little bit. But uh, Angus is saved. And she goes to meet Samson, her companion. And Samson not only is a giant dog, but he also has the talent of he can fly. So she, he gets down on Raket for blackmailing Zach to help them on their mission. But what's the mission? Neither Zach or we know yet. So perhaps we'll find out tonight. And that's where we're going to pick up 
And now I get to introduce a rapidly growing good friend of mine, who is also the professional audio narrator, who's actually in the process of narrating not just book one, but all three of the current books of the Zach Bates series. Ben Fife is here with his daughter, and he's going to actually do the reading in character with his various voices itself. So welcome to the call, Ben, and thank you for being here. And let's pick up the story right there. Okay. Hi, everybody. And my daughter that says Loreen over here, that's actually Rosie. She's my daughter. And she and I voiced a couple of books together, and we'll talk about those later in the, the thing, too. But yeah, anyway, great. I'll launch right in. Chapter four, The Summit. God, how he hated going to another school. Page Middle School would be the third school in less than four years. It seemed to get harder with each one. He felt like a big black ant trying to sneak into the red ant's anthill. As Kalita pulled the Buick up to the curb, Zack could feel all the heads turning. Warning, warning, intruder in the nest. To make it worse, Kalita stopped the car right next to a gang of boys that looked like nothing but trouble. His radar had gotten good through the years picking up the signs. Pull up a little farther, will you? Zack asked with a little quaver to his voice. What's with you all of a sudden? Do you think I'm your mate? I've got errands to run this morning. Now, out with you, Kalita said with a laugh, and have a good day. I'll pick you up here promptly at 3.15, and we'll go see Angus. She leaned over to give Zack a kiss on the cheek, but he slipped out of the car before she could reach him. He slammed the door harder than he had intended and smiled back at his stepmother apologetically. She apparently hadn't noticed anything was wrong, already turning to look over her shoulder to check for traffic. Zack walked briskly toward the entrance of the school, hoping to get inside before the gang saw him, but luck was not in Zack's favor. He was still 20 feet from the door when a hand caught him by the shoulder and spun him around. The tallest boy of the group stood with his hand still on Zack's shoulder, his long, dirty fingernails digging painfully into Zack's skin. He stood a good head taller than Zack and several inches taller than anyone in his gang. Why, who is this? Do we have a new kid trying to sneak by our welcoming committee? The boy said with a sneer, then waited for his gang members to snicker at his bad joke. Why in such a hurry? I want to welcome you to your first day of school. My friends here call me Rat, and this is my school, if you get my drift. Rat patted Zack hard on his shoulder, emphasizing each word. Zack tried unsuccessfully not to winch, not to wince from the sharp, sharp blows. I don't want any trouble, Zack said softly, wondering how he could be so unlucky to attract the school bullies within it to attract the school's bully within minutes of his arrival. It's your school, I got it. You can have it for all I care. Zack knew at once it was the wrong thing to say, but he had a knack for sticking his foot in his mouth around bullies. That's good. We understand each other just fine. So, what's your name? Zack. Zack Bates. 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 That sounds familiar. Where does your old man work? Consolidated Enterprises, Zack replied reluctantly. They just transferred us here. I knew it, Rat said, finally removing his hand from Zack's shoulder, but not before using it to give him a less than playful shove. My old man is your old man's boss. Small world, isn't it? Zack groaned. Small world, and an unfair one at that. Oh, just one more thing. Consider this your last lesson in today's orientation. See that girl over there with her hair tied back in a ponytail? Rat pointed over to a group of girls welcoming each other back to another year. Zack nodded. Stay away from her, you hear? I don't want you so much as looking at her straight. If I hear you're messing around with her, my friends here won't take it too kindly. Zack nodded again. It would be an easy request to follow. Girls and he didn't get along well. For some reason, whenever he was around girls his own age, the connection between his brain and his mouth seemed to short-circuit. You understand? Rat asked again. Let me hear you say it. I understand, O oh high and mighty Rat, 
Zack thought, but said, I understand. So soft that he wasn't sure he'd actually said it. Evidently, it was loud enough for Rat, for with one last shove, he and his gang turned to find the next person to hassle. Welcome to a new school year, Zack thought, as he turned to enter the school. He went straight to his homeroom. As he sat there waiting for the bell, his anger began to boil. It wasn't fair to be treated like this. He hadn't done anything to Rat to provoke him. It was like he walked around with a big L tattooed on his forehead, or there was some international association of bullies that informed each other whenever they deemed, whenever someone they deemed as a loser moved to a new location. That, to make matters worse, Rat's dad also worked at CE. If bullying was a genetic disorder, his dad was probably receiving the same unfair abuse at this very minute, which meant that his dad had just leapt from the frying pan into the fire with his new position likely to be at least as stressful as his previous one, which meant he'd probably see very little of his dad, except late at night when he could be found in his study, drinking his favorite scotch. A light touch on his shoulder brought Zack back to the classroom. He turned around to find a familiar face smiling at him as she leaned across the, the aisle. Aren't you Angus's owner? She whispered as she glanced from Zack to the teacher in the front, room, front of the room and back. Zack's throat immediately dried up, and he found it hard to catch his breath, so instead of answering, he just nodded. I'm Alice and George, but everyone calls me Allie around here, she said as she held out her hand. Zack stared at it for an interminable length of time, then, just as Allie was about to draw it back, reached out and lightly shook it. He felt his throat close tighter and his heart rate climb. I stopped by the clinic before coming to school. Angus is looking so much better. She glanced back to the front of the room. Ms. Runyon is about to call roll. Maybe we can talk later. How about lunch? Zack managed to nod once. As Allie turned back to face the front of the room, he noticed the flip of an all-too-familiar ponytail. Oh, no. He had just made lunch plans with Rat's girlfriend? Zack turned his attention back to the front of the room as well, and caught Ms. Runyon staring at him. Well, maybe she'll make me come back at lunch for talking in class, he thought hopefully. But she only smiled and went back to her paperwork. He didn't remember much about the morning classes. His mind kept flitting from Allie and Rat to Angus and Raykit, and back again. I wonder why Allie had asked him to lunch. Maybe it was a practical joke and she wouldn't show. He wasn't sure what would be worse, her showing or her standing him up. If Rat finds out, he'll pulverize me. I hope Angus's x-rays are okay. What in the world could Ray Kit expect of me? All morning, his thoughts played havoc with his attention. But he managed to make it through his classes without getting into trouble. With just one more class to go before lunch, Zack contemplated skipping lunch and hiding out in one of the boys' bathrooms but the pancakes from breakfast were long gone and his stomach kept growling to let him know what a bad idea it was. He walked into Mrs. Runyon's biology class just as the final bell rung. Ah, good, Mrs. Runyon said from the front of the room. You're just in time and you'll make our class count an even number, which is important because in biology, you'll each be assigned a buddy. Let's see, you must be Zachary Bates. Is that correct? Several of the kids chuckled at his full name. Zack, just Zack, and yes, that's me. Okay, Zack, please take your seat next to Allison over there. She's without a lab partner. Oh, no, this can't be happening. How would he ever get through biology with a girl as a lab partner, especially one that was sure to get him creamed by the biggest bully in school? Well, Allie was sure to be one of the smartest ones in class if the other day at the veterinary hospital was any indication. Zack Bates, hello there. Are you listening? Mrs. Runyon asked. Everyone in the class stared at him, his face flushed as he listened to their giggles. Yes, ma'am, I heard you, Zack replied as his legs finally found the energy to move him towards the empty seat next to Allie. Now, class, I know having biology just before lunch may appear to be a scheduling error, but that's the way the courses fell this year, so we'll make the most of it. Let's start by taking out your books and looking at what we have to cover this semester. 
Zack was already gone again at the word lunch. How could he possibly get out of having lunch with Allie now that they were in the same class? And what if Rat or one of his gang members saw them walking to the lunchroom together? Today was turning out to be one of the worst first days of school ever. Truth be told, he really wanted to have lunch with her. He could use a friend, especially a smart one that shared his interest and love for animals. If he stood her up, she'd probably tell all her friends what a heartless, conceited boy he was. He'd be an outcast in the school before the new year had hardly started. The only kid that would ever talk to him would be Rat, and that would be a short conversation, just before Rat knocked his lights out for being La Allie's lab partner. The period zipped by way too fast, and as the bell rung ending the period, Zack knew he'd keep his lunch date. Make a choice and then make it the right one. He remembered Luke's advice. How come his brother had never told him, had told him how? I'll meet you in the lunchroom, Allie said as they filed out of the room. I've got to get something out of my locker. She turned and strolled away. This was his chance. He could just disappear for an hour and tell her next time uh, he saw her that, she, that he'd not been able to find the lunchroom. But he followed the flow of students, and before he knew it, he was inside the cafeteria, walking through the line. He was startled to find when he sat down, he had three oranges and two bananas on his plate. That was it for lunch? He didn't even like bananas. He thought about going through the line again, but the embarrassment of being caught going through the line a second time curbed his appetite. The oranges would have to do. As he sat there peeling one of the oranges, he glanced around to see if he saw a rat or any of his cronies. Perhaps he'd get lucky for once, and they'd be scheduled to eat the falling period. As he looked around, he saw Allie coming through the line, just as she saw him. She paid for her meal, one that was clearly more balanced and nutritious than his mindless selection, then strolled over to his table. He felt his throat tighten up and his mouth go suddenly dry, despite the slice of orange he'd just put in his mouth. Suddenly, the prospect of being beat up by Rat didn't look so unappealing, compared to having to try to spend the next 30 minutes carrying on an intelligent conversation with a girl. As Allie sat down across from him, she, she glanced down at his tray. Are you a vegetarian? Afraid his voice would crack if he spoke too soon, he simply shook his head and popped another orange slice in his mouth. Well, I'm not either, at least not yet. I've thought about becoming one, though, and the more I learn about how the animals that are raised for food are treated, the better I like the idea. So I try to stay with fish or occasionally chicken, though the fish sticks they serve here are close to inedible. Allie smiled at him as she placed a bit of fish into her mouth. They ate in silence for a while, and slowly, Zack found he could breathe and swallow again. Slowly, his heart rate returned to almost normal. That Angus sure is a cute dog. Allie said as she pushed her plate away and opened her carton of milk. And such a fighter, too. I don't think I've ever seen a dog come back so strong after having been so deeply in shock. How long have you had him? All his life, Zack replied, thankful that his voice sounded fairly normal, so he decided to risk a further reply. That's about seven years. As they continued to talk, first about Angus, then about some of the other animals at the clinic, Zack found himself slowly growing more at ease. It was fairly easy to talk to Allie. Since she was comfortable carrying the conversation, his main job was to listen and to occasionally ask another question. Besides, they had something in common to talk about, their love for animals. Towards the end of lunch, Allie reached into her notebook and pulled out a flowered scarf. She asked Zack to clear a place on the table, and as he did so, she laid the scarf out flat on the table. As she started waving her hands over the flattened scarf, several other kids around them turned to watch, which made Zack uncomfortable. <clears throat> what if commotion drew Rat's attention? Although he, didn't, although he hadn't seen the gang leader, he felt certain he wasn't far away. Pay attention, Zack. Allison's voice pulled him back. I have a little trick for you. Are you kidding? a girl who not only loved animals, but also liked magic and knew how to do it, this was turning out to be a pretty good day after all. 
She continued waving her hands over the colorful scarf, whispering a soft incantation. Then, with a flurry, she lifted the scarf from the table. To Zack's amazement, on the table lay an envelope with his name on it. The other kids applauded, then returned to their lunches. It's actually for Angus. Zack opened the envelope to find a Get Well card inside. The front of the card showed a fair likeness of a Cairn Terrier chasing a ball. As he opened the card, a small object fell on the table. Zack picked it up. It's a small horseshoe charm, Allie said. I figure they're good luck for people, so why not for our pets? I thought you might want to put it on Agus's collar when you see him this afternoon. Yeah, that would be great, Zack finally said. He was surprised to find a lump in his throat, making it even harder to talk. You can't ever have too much good luck, I guess. On the inside was the same dog, uh, laid up in bed with his leg in a sling. It said, sometimes it's a rough life. Get well soon, Angus. Love, Allie. Zack looked up, a silly grin on his face. These are great. Thanks a lot. The bell ended the lunch period, sounded, and Allie stood up to leave. As she did, she leaned over and gave Zack a light peck on the cheek. Give this to him as well, she whispered in his ear, and then hurried off, leaving a faced Zack behind. When Zack finally refocused his attention on the lunchroom, his eyes fell on Stewie Dickerson, one of Rat's gang members. It was obvious from the look on Stewie's face he'd witnessed the whole scene. Oh no, it's not what you think, Stewie. Zack muttered under his breath, but he knew it didn't matter what he said. His fate had been sealed. This must be how Jesus felt when that Jess fellow kissed him in that garden, Zack thought as he lightly touched the spot on his cheek. Zack spent the rest of the afternoon in his own brand of misery. Between each class, he felt certain he would run into Rat in the hall. Zack prided Wild. He imagined hands reaching out of the lockers as he passed by, locking the door behind him. There, he'd be face to face with Rat, both crammed into the tiny locker together. Somehow, Rat's gang would be in there with him, all of them laughing at Zack. But Rat wasn't laughing. No, he took meeting seriously. Zack heard the sound of a switchblade opening, but couldn't see Rat's hands. He tried to bend his head to find the blade but the locker was too cramped. He groped around with his own hands, trying to find the hand that carried the blade, but stopped it before it slid neatly between his ribs or into his groin. He couldn't find it, couldn't stop Rat's revenge. Holy cow, Rat! Uh-oh. Sounds like he's... Zack was relieved to find he was still in the hall, and so far, no rat. Figured he had sweated off three pounds before the final bell. He rushed out of the classroom and down the hall before they filled with other students. He flew by his locker, ignoring the additional books he needed for his homework and outside the door and out the door. Outside in the afternoon sunshine, Zack felt like a convict. Behind any bush or tree, he would only be safe once he was in his own car. But where was Kalita? Doggone it, she's setting me up. Rat, going to teach me a lesson for not being nicer to her. Oh, please. He ran to the road, and as he reached the sidewalk, the gray Buick pulled around the corner and stopped in front of him. Kalita opened the window on the passenger side and smiled. Hey there, my little friend. Would you care to go visit the doggy? Zack hopped into the car, finally able to catch his breath. You must be excited to see Angus, Kalita laughed as she pulled the car away from the curb. Zack turned around in the parking lot, and as they passed by the school, Zack saw Rat and Stewie run out of the building. Rat spied him through the tinted glass of the automobile. He raised his hand in a fist, shaking it at Zack. Zack was too far away to make out Rat's words, but he caught the jest of the conversation. He wondered if it was too early in the school year to pretend to be sick. 
the way he felt at the moment, he'd probably not need to pretend. All right. Very good, Ben. Very good. So that's the end of that first chapter. We have one more chapter to go, but we're going to take just a brief, short break here. I want to ask you, invite you to come off of mute here. We're going to kind of have a little bit of Q&A and show and tell. So um, you can, you know, if you want to respond to my uh, questions or ask a question, uh, either of uh, Ben or myself, you can. And if there's time at the end, we'll also have another time for, for you know, question and answers. So I'm going to put it so I think we got it. So let's see. I'm going to say ask all to unmute. See if that was correctly. Yeah. Um, yes, yesterday I was feeling really, I was really, I, I, I like had a fever. Yes. But I'm feeling way better today. Oh, that's good. That's good. I want to ask you, the kids particularly, but you know, maybe some of the adults can, can remember this too. Do you remember those first days? You know, the first day of school, particularly if you went to a new school that you hadn't been to before. How many of you remember that? Homeschooled. And you remember it I'm and enjoyed it. Raise your hand if you enjoyed going to school on that first day. I enjoy doing school at home because I'm homeschooled. We, we got one of these and a couple of the guys that I haven't seen it, any of the... Say that again, please. You didn't quite catch that. <clears throat> okay, so. I always liked the first day of school, actually. I did too. I did too. It took me a few weeks before I started. I actually, overall, I liked school. You know, I did. I, I, I really feel for the kids right now who are dealing with this, you know, COVID thing and, you know, are they going to be in school? Are they not going to be in school? Uh, how much of it has to, going to have to be long distance learning? I mean, I really do feel for you guys. You know, this is, I would not have wanted to have to deal with that, you know, when I was growing up itself. Yeah, I always liked it because I had new folders and new pencils and like crayons and like usually a new pair of tennis shoes to start the school year with. <laughs> exactly. so I was like Christmas, but only in like August. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good, very good. Um, so I also want to take a few moments um, and see how many of you um, raise your hand or, or do a wave or something like that if you have uh, done your, if you download and print it out, your uh, coloring page, whether you colored it or not. Yeah, let's load it up. I see Ben has his. This one has two. Yeah, this one. Rosie has two. Wow, that's very good. Want to look at them? I'm already done. So here you got to hold them still. Yeah, hold it still for just a moment so everybody can say anything. That's very good. That's very good. I like that one better than mine. I thought I had, I thought I would have the best one too, but I didn't. So I'm going to show you mine. See if I can get it you know, where you can see. It. Here's mine. I decided I didn't want all dark clouds, so I decided to start have some pink and orange and yellow clouds. You know. This is the other one. Awesome, there. Yeah, let me see your other one there, Rosie. Oh yeah, that's ah. great. Ah, good. Good pink. I never would have thought to paint. Uh, to color uh, Samson uh, pink and orange. That's very, that's very creative. Very creative. And blue. <laughs> and blue. And blue. And blue too. Okay, yeah. Well, of course, you got to have a little blue if you want to have pink and orange. You got to have a little bit. Okay, great. Now, if those of you who haven't, you have the <clears throat> opportunity to do this. And if you um, want to take a picture of them and send them to me, I would love to see them. You know, you can take a picture, you have your parents take a picture with your, you know, uh, your, your, you know, with their, their cell phone or whatever. And then I'm going to be sending out a follow up, you know, email with some really important 
new uh, and information you're going to want to know about. So you could reply to that and send that, you know, uh, send those pictures to me as well. Uh, and we might do something with um, Instagram and kind of share them out, you know, in, into the social media. Once, um, once one of my uh, cohorts here figures out how to do that. <laughs> do you want to see my pencil case? <laughs> oh, sure, let's see. Did you call it that? On top and you, then didn't, you didn't call it that though, did you? Here, let me show you. I, I needed to show mine too. So I gave him a mustache like me <laughs> and, uh, and the same shirt and bow tie that I'm wearing. Ah, uh, that's why you got bow tie. Oh, I wish I had thought about it. I should have put a hat. I should have put a hat on, uh, on Zach or, or maybe on um, Ray Kent. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can add that. So. Hey, Brad, this is great. I, I finally got some printer cartridges for my home printer uh, from Amazon yesterday. Now I can print these out and you've given me a reason to go buy do you guys remember those big giant 64 Crayolas where you could sharpen your own crayons? I hope they still make those because yeah, I, I, think, I think they're oh, there you them. go. <laughs> oh yeah. I love those. I, oh, outstanding. I am making a purchase. Brad, thank you for the gift of getting a chance to color again. This is awesome. Well, I tell you, I I I did it and I'm with, you know, I felt kind of a little silly, I'll be honest. But it was so relaxing. And then I remembered my wife did it for quite a long time. You know, color just, you know, she'd sit there watching TV and coloring, you know, had had these kind of grown up coloring books that were, you know, quite intricate designs and all that. So it can be very relaxing, both for for kids and for those of us who are still kids at heart. So okay. <laughs> Uh, before we go on, does anybody, uh, kids and or adults, have a question about the story? We'll, we'll get into things about, you know, questions, you know, general questions about, you know. I gave all of them pink. I gave all of them pink headphones. Pink head. <laughs> Very good, Rosie. That's great. Any, any other questions or anything, any other comments we want to make before we go into chapter two? Chapter two is a bit shorter um, and we're going to get some important information um, about where this story is going. Chapter five. Yes, that's right. Chapter five, I had to count up in my head. Dad said. Yes, okay. I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to mute everybody as soon as I figure out how to do that. Ah, there's the button. And then I'm going to unmute or ask Ben to unmute. There we go. There we go. And we'll go into, let's see, did I have, oh yeah, I do have a little so, Zach and Kalita drive straight to the veterinary hospital to check on Angus. And Zach learns that Angus has a broken pelvis. However, that isn't too serious. And with time and some cage rest, it should be able to heal without needing surgery. That's good news. Sometimes, those pelvic you know, injuries needed surgery, but in Angus's case, he was lucky. Now, in the process of this, Angus, because he's such a fighter, has become a favorite patient of the hospital. And Zach, while he's there, looks around, but he doesn't see that strange cat that he met the previous day. And he's informed by one of the that one of the receptionists usually lets Tip, as they, they, the people at the hospital call him Tip, but he's in actual fact is Raket, the magic cat. They usually let him out in the afternoon. So before Zach goes looking for the cat, Dr. George, realizing what a animal lover Zach is, offers him a job when he's old enough at the hospital on a part-time basis. 
Now this is great for Zach because he loves animals. He has his own zoo, as we learned in the in in the first chapter. So he loves the idea of you know possibly working at the hospital in the future. So we pick up the story there with Dr. George speaking. Go for it, Dr. George. I've got to go see some appointments now. We'll talk more about it later. Go on and see if you can find your friend Old Tip. Zack had temporarily forgotten about Ray Kit. At the mention of her alias, Zack suddenly remembered he had a promise to her he would have to honor first before he could take on, be taking any on, <laughs> before he could take on any job. Well, I'll just have to get whatever she has in mind done quickly so it won't interfere with my new career. Zack Bates, kennel manager. He liked the ring of it. Zack walked to the side exit, where they'd brought Angus in less than 24 hours before, and strolled to the end of the building. The animal care clinic was on a spacious lot, which had once been an open field. At the rear of the building, a field of broom straw still grew, leading up to a dense crop of trees. As Zack rounded the corner of the building, he spied Ray Kit sitting at the edge of the field. Zack stopped and was about to call to her when he noticed she was holding something in her front paws. He thought at first it must be a field mouse, but as she held it up to her nose, it looked more like one of Kalita's smelly little baggies she liked to keep in dresser drawers. Zack continued to watch as Ray Kit took a deep whiff and then placed the little sack under her. Zack couldn't be sure whether she was sitting on it or what. As he took a couple of steps toward her, his movement startled her. What are you doing sneaking around here? She snipped at him defensively. I wasn't sneaking. I just came to find you, Zack said as he stopped a few feet away. He still found it hard to believe the raspy voice came from her. Ray Kit's voice sounded like it belonged to an old lady, maybe a grandmother who had raised a bunch of tough children and had turned to leather out of the job. He knelt down so he could speak to her without drawing attention. I wanted to thank you for saving my dog's life. I was just visiting him and he's doing great. Think nothing of it. It's all in a day's work for a magic cat, although saving dogs' lives isn't normally my forte. Besides, it was a business arrangement. We negotiated a fair deal. I presume you have come to fulfill your part of the bargain. Zack straightened his back but continued to kneel. I have. Whatever it is, I live up to my commitments. He'd heard Luke say that once to one of his employers, and it had seemed to impress the old man. It's good to hear you say that. We'll see how long you sing that tune, Raykit answered, then turned her back on him and gazed across the field. After a couple of minutes, when she didn't say anything else, but continued to stare at the swaying broom straw, Zack grew impatient. Well... What is it? You are to represent us. By that, I mean all the animals of the world, Raykit said, then paused again. Yeah? Represent you how? Where? Zack asked, Zack asked as he felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand at attention. At the United Nations, at the Environmental Summit, you are to take our mandate before the world leaders. You are to persuade them to cease the careless and needless poisoning of our planet. You are to make sure they understand the animals who they share this planet with will no longer stand for such carelessness. That's it. Raykit turned in his direction, and Zack could have sworn the old cat smiled at him. That's it. That's all. Just stroll up in front of all those, those world leaders and tell them to cut out this pollution business? Just like that. Zack wasn't sure who was crazier, him for standing there talking to a magic cat, or Ray Kit for making such an impossible request. Yes, that's it. But you must convince them to stop at once. You can't just present yourself before them, say your peace, and leave. You must make a difference. You must! The last was said with such fervor that it shocked Zack into silence. When he was able to find his voice again, it came out weak and strained. I can't. I can't. I simply can't. I've got school to attend. I've got my zoo to look after. It'll take months before Angus is better. He needs my attention. There's just no way. Raykit turned and stared at him. 
Her green eyes seemed to burn into his very soul. You what? You can't? What is this nonsense? There's no can't about it. You must. You promised. Besides, I happen to know you are the one for this task. Remember, you are talking to a magic cat, the last remaining magic cat, possibly the greatest magic cat of all time. She pushed out her chest and began to strut. I've checked it out carefully with the stars. They confirmed that you are the one. I knew it all along, but it doesn't hurt in such important matters, to be sure. I'm sure you are the one to do this. It's done. Kaput. Complete. Now, we'll need to leave soon. We've got to get you to the council. Then, as training in public speaking, you'll need to study the reports we've gathered as evidence. Whoa, wait a minute, Zack interrupted. You don't understand. I haven't agreed to do this. <laughs> Raykit stopped her strutting and glanced at him as though she'd just eaten a bad mouse. Oh, yes, you have. If you'll recall, you agreed to it yesterday. You said, whatever it is, I'll do it. Those were your exact words. I may be 500 years old, but my memory is still as sharp as it ever was. You're 500 years old? Zack asked in awe. Yes, but don't change the subject. Besides, it's impolite to talk about a lady's age. The point is, you've already agreed to it. We're well beyond that part of the conversation. Now we just need to figure out how you're going to do it. But don't worry. Samson and I are here to support you. Samson? Who's Samson? Oh, didn't I tell you? He's my... Well, he's my servant. I guess that's the best way to describe him. He won't actually be much help to you, I'm afraid, but it won't matter. You've got a magic cat on your side. The last and the greatest. Remember? How could I forget? Zack replied with a groan. He sat down next to the cat, ignoring the moist red clay he sat on. He picked up a pebble and tossed it towards the trees. Finally, he looked up at Raykit. What about my stepmother, Kalida? He asked, a small hint of hope creeping into his voice. She'll never let me go. She's already concerned about the amount of school I've missed. Don't worry about her or your school. I'll handle those details. You just be back here tomorrow morning by seven. We've got much work to do. What if I can't get away? Zack asked as he stood up. You are the most can't little boy I've met in some time. I just told you I'd take care of the details. Trust me, you'll see. I've already trusted you and see where it's gotten me. Zack replied under his breath. If Raykit heard the comment, she decided to ignore it. I've got a ton of homework, Zack said, making one final plea to Raykit. Good. You better get home and get on it. I don't do homework, Raykit said as she turned and strolled towards the woods. Seven o'clock. Don't be late. Zack watched as she disappeared into the woods. How in the world was he going to explain this to Kalita? Worse, how was he going to convince the entire United Nations to listen to him? They seldom listened to each other. Surely they wouldn't give a 12-year-old boy the time of day. Very good. Very good. So we find out what the mission is. And Zach is not too excited about it. How would you like to have to go and speak to the leaders of the free world, the United Nations? That's a huge, you know, huge organization and demand that they quit polluting the world. I think Jason's ready to go. Jason, <laughs> we change your name to Zach and send you on the mission. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So again, I want to open it up. Anybody has, you know, any questions about um, the storyline, or any questions to about uh, Ben as far as being a professional audiobook narrator, or about me being an author? Anything that you'd like to ask is fair game. We just have a few minutes, and then we're going to finish up with a surprise. We got we got some gifts for you guys in case you're interested. Uh, Ben kind of hinted about it, you know, a few minutes ago. But again, if you have any questions, you have to first come off mute and then just kind of raise your hand like this. We won't use the electronic part. Just kind of raise your hand because I can see everybody. And what questions, you know, do you have? Anybody have any questions? 
I have some questions for you, by the way. So, you know, if you don't ask your questions, I'm going to ask my questions. So how are they supposed to get to the United Nations? Ah, well, you know, that's one of those questions like, you know, it's like what, what we used to always do in the book reports, you know, remember in like fifth, sixth grade when we had book reports, you know, and, and we tell you about part of the story, and then, but then when we get to the really important part, we say, well, if you really want to know what happens next, you have to read the book. <laughs> so you have to either read the book or come back to the next and the next, you know, uh, read up and have it read to you. Or like LeVar Burton said, but you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> At least the people of my generation get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we have to remember, you know, we, we've got this character that's kind of been introduced, but not by a lot yet, Samson. And remember I said, Samson has his own special talents and we're going to discover that those talents are more special than just being able to fly. So, yeah, again, remember, he's up there in the clouds, and that's not just because he's jumping high, he's actually able to fly. So that might have something to do with how he gets there. He, he won't be there directly, though. Great question, though, Jason. Thanks for that. Who else? David, you had a question. I see you're off mute. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to acknowledge Ben for your uh, for your great work. Uh, Brad invited me on the call because I let him know I have an interest in voice work. He said, "Well, you got to meet Ben." I said, "Okay." Um, so I I look forward to uh, having a conversation with you at another time. But Brad, this is the first time I actually had heard uh, what, about any of your work, I actually got a chance to hear it and it was wonderful. I really thank you for the invitation and, and no kidding, yes, I will be printing off the things that I didn't print today uh, and tomorrow, uh, if not personally at Walmart or online, I am ordering my 64 Crayola pack because <laughs> I am looking forward to, to coloring again. We have discovered a whole new hobby for David, so when he can't sleep late at night, he'll be up coloring. <laughs> That's an inside joke for those of you that don't know. Yeah, <laughs> my five-year-old keeps me awake at night because it's afraid it's going to miss something. <laughs> so now I can be coloring instead. That's right. That's right. So I want to ask the question of oh, uh, Rosie. You have a question or a comment? What? What? Well, tomorrow we're going to get all our school supplies. Ah, that's what Jason was talking about, getting all Well, that we and... already have the school supplies, but not all the fun stuff, though. <laughs> all right, good. Very good. Well, I have a question for, you, for the children and for the adults, too, but particularly for the children. So, Zach Bates and Samson and Raykit are part of what's going to become known as the Eco Adventure Team. So they're going to go on a lot of missions. Each book is about at least one or more missions that they go on. So I'm st I've actually started in the, you know, since the first um, uh, read up, uh, working on a book that one of the people that had listened and, and watched the video of the first read up answered this question. So I'm gonna ask the question in just a moment, but she came up with a great idea that spawned another part of the idea. And so it's from her original ideas that I'm gonna be writing the fourth book that currently has the working title of Junkyard Dogs. I'm going to say about it right now. So here's the question. If you were to go on an adventure with Raykit, and, the, and you know, again, remember, Magic Cat, you don't want to miss that, right? Go on the adventure with Raykit and the rest of the Eco Adventure team to help animals around the world, what might that adventure be? What animals do you feel need a dedicated and magical team to help them through their challenges here on planet Earth? 
Now, that may not be something that you immediately have an answer to. You might want to have a conversation and talk about it with your with your parents or with your siblings or with your friends or all of the above. And if you come up with an idea you think is a good one, or if you're not even sure it's a good one or not, some, you know, not every idea is a good one, but sometimes it's just the seed of an idea that will actually produce maybe book number um, five and then book six, because I plan to write at least 10 of these. Um, so. Um, uh, Rosie, you have uh, you have an idea for a book? I'm like, I'm like Scott. Scott. I, I am, am animals and, and birds. birds. I heard something about birds. Uh, um, ben, could you mute yourself for just a second? I think we we're getting feedback from yours. Could be. Just a second. There we go. Could you repeat the uh, what you were saying, Rosie? Sky animals. Sky animals. Sky animals. Oh, I love that. Sky animals. So any, any type of animals, so, so that would obviously be birds. What would be other types of sky animals? How about bats? Bees. Oh, bees. Of course, you know, bees, you know, or insects, they're still animals in a way. Okay, bees and bats. Dragonflies. Dragonflies. Dragons. Dragons. Oh, dragons. Oh, <laughs> that's I wonderful. love dragons. Oh, it's getting interesting. I love, I love dragons. dragons. That's I love dragon. voicing dragons. You do? Okay. So we might have we might have to put a dragon in there just so your your, your dad can record it. <laughs> so. <laughs> So. so it's it's time for a pun. So we're gonna pack our trunks and go to Africa and help protect the elephants. Well, we already have. Actually, they, uh, Zach Bates and the Eco Adventure team go to Africa and help the elephants in book three called Ghost Elephant. <gasps> no, awesome. Uh, so you, Are you there might... more drawings I can color? <laughs> Not yet, but we'll, well, I'm sure we can round up a couple. Okay, before we okay. I'm going to have a lot of crayons. Yeah. So I want to, I'm going to share my screen here in just a second, because like yeah. I said, we had a special, yeah. looks special we want to share with you. And I want to see how I can do this. I normally have two different screens and it's so easier, but I'm going to make this work somehow. I'm going to share screen and go here. And, and you guys can see that now. Oh, it's going to be. I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to see if I can get over here. So it's a little bit more presentable there. Okay. You guys should be able to see this. So, uh, a generous contribution from Ben Fife and a couple of his um, other author friends. Um, these me, are me, me. two books. Oh, that's right, excuse me. Ben Fife, Fife and his daughter are recording this and I listened to some uh, snippets of it and it was marvelous. And you know, Rosa, Thanks. you do a fantastic job. You have a career in, 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 in voice if you decide you want to pursue that. Maybe. So maybe, okay. <laughs> um, so this is the first one and this is the second one. So it's actually it's swapped the other way. Is the other way? Okay. Yeah, the three. Enchanted Coins is the first one, Coin of Fire is the second. Thanks. Thanks for correcting me on that. So Shorty Bean and the Enchanted Coins. And I believe Shorty is the part that you play. Is that not right, Rosie? Yep. Yeah. Okay, very good. I'm so okay. We're going to include in the follow up email if you want one or both of these as an audio book with Ben and Rosie playing the different roles, then we'll have a link there where you can uh, contact them and, and request. And what they'll send you back is a coupon code that you can use to download the books for free. 
And all we asked is if you will then, when you finish, will you leave a review, an honest review, <laughs> say whether you like it, you didn't like it, but just an honest review, that would really be very beneficial itself. And for those um, of you who are a little older and shorty bean doesn't attract, seem appealing to you, if I can figure out how to do this, I'm going to go to the next one. There we go. I, uh, Ben Fife, and this time, not Rosie, but Meg Price. They are the narrators of my book that came out this earlier this year on February the 14th called The Fringe Candidate. This is a fantasy story of sorts. It's a political satire uh, where, with a happy ending. I just felt like right now it was important given all the turmoil in the world, both with COVID and our political situations and all that, that some of you might enjoy this. So there's the link to it, but don't worry about copying down the link. That will be in the uh, follow-up message as well. So if you're interested in that, any of the adults for a uh, coupon code on that, reply um, to the email or go to this link if you wanna hear some samples of it. And then uh, you, there'll be a form there you can fill out to request a uh, coupon of that one as well. Okay, um, we're at our hour, the time for me flew by. I don't know for you guys. I think it probably flew by for Ben as well. I want to thank you all for coming. Oh, there is one other thing. I forgot there was one other slide there. Let me open that up again just one more time. Go back to it. No, I don't see it. Okay, where did it go? <laughs> Well, let me just, hmm, I'm going to have to stop sharing it for a second, see if I can do that again, do it correctly. Can you guys see that? Because I'm not able to see it. Neither can I. Neither can you. Okay. Well, I tell you what it was going to be, and, and then it will be in the email. The next one, the next time we meet will be number three of the Zach Bates. It will also be on a Wednesday. I don't have the date there. It was there on that slide itself. So right in the middle of the month. Sometimes around the, I don't know if, you know, Ben. It's or the 16th is what it shows on here. Oh, sorry. It shows is the 16th of September. Gotcha. Very good. So September 16th, we'll have number three. We'd love to see all of you back and bring a friend. We're going to have friend day and we'll also, you know, continue to do the, for any of you who haven't done your coloring yet, or if you had and you want to, you know, color another one, bring those as well. David, I expect to see yours, and I want at least 60 of those 64 colors. You okay, everybody. Again, thank you so much for being here. I loved it. I love seeing you. Loved all the kids. I want you to stay safe and happy until next time when we pick up with Zach Bates and the Eco Adventure team. Take care, everybody. Live long and prosper. Uh, live long and prosper. Yes, same here. Bye. <laughs> I snapped. Thank you, Brad. You. That was that was wonderful. Thanks so much for the invitation. Uh, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it.